Hi, Matt Johnson here, another episode of Deck Talk. We're excited, bass season's underway. We've already been targeting walleyes, panfish, pike. Now we can fish for bass here in Minnesota, like much of the country. Soon we're gonna be chasing muskies as well. Today I wanna to touch on rigging some of these specific bass plastics. It's a very exciting topic to me because we have so many options out there, a huge array. There's some new stuff from Mr. Twister out this year that I wanna show you. It's very exciting. I got a chance to use some of these plastics last year. Did very well. In fact, even won a pretty large tournament on Lake Minnetonka fishing one of these particular baits. So we're going to go over some new tackle options this year for soft plastics. And we're going to talk about how to rig them. So this is going to be soft rigging on deck talk. So to start things off, one of the most common types of rigging situations is going to be the Texas rig. We all know how that works. You have your worm hook. You know, you've got your L-bend down there. Works very well for a variety of situations, and we're going to rig this with my favorite bait. Anyone who watches these shows and sees me talk about bass fishing, they know I talk about that Mr. Twister Kamita on a regular basis. That's going to be your soft stick worm. It can be fished in a variety of ways. Probably the most versatile option that we have as bass anglers is going to be that Mr. Twister Kamita. And how I'm going to rig this to show you particularly right now is going to be, i got a rod rigged up here already. We're not going to get into too much detail about line choices or those sorts of things in this episode. We're going to talk about specifically rigging. And you can see here I got my 5 op worm hook. Brand to me is not a huge thing. I'll use Gamagatsu owner Mustad. I happen to have a Gamagatsu 5 super Superline hook on here. Works very well because I'm using braid on this setup for shallow cover bass as we get into the early season here. So I take that Kamita and what I do, you can see here with the Texas rig, all I'm doing is I'm poking a little bit in there going down just probably a half an inch and that comes through the end thread that all the way through you got that L bend on there and as that comes up you can see it sits in place nice and neat And what I do then is I find right where my fingers or the hooks gonna go through at length I hold my finger there poke it all the way through that keeps it on there nice and straight which is important when you're casting that shell cover you want that slow fall or the exact enticing erratic action as long as it's not crumpled up on there the next thing I do is I actually take that pin end of that hook and bury it just a slightly in there. And then you got the setup as you can see fit. And that works very well. It's weightless. It casts like a dream. You can use 20, 30, 40 pound braid on a bait casting setup and still cast this thing fairly well. And this is a great option for skipping docks, casting shallow cover, whatever it might be. So that's the weightless Texas rig Kamita. Very, very effective for a lot of bass uh, situations. One way you can change this very easily without cutting or retying, I use those crimp on water gremlin bullet weights. And all you do, just like they say, you crimp them on your line, and what you can do is you can slide that down, fish it much like a Texas rig with a weight on the end. So now you can punch through lily pads, you can punch through shallow cover, whatever it might be, be a little more erratic action, drop quicker, and get more of an impulse bite. And this happens just to be a little eighth ounce head on there, but you can use all different sizes up to quarter ounce, half ounce, whatever it might be. They come in all, all sizes and shapes. So you crimp that on there, get a different action, the same presentation. One step further, you can actually slide this up and down your line. They don't crimp on what, as well on bra monofilm or a braided line, super lines, because that braid tends to slide. It works better on a fluorocarbon or a monofilm filament, but you can see there, now I got my weight up here and I got my Texas rig Kamita down there. This makes contact with the bottom as this does what it wants to do, free flowing, less resistance for the fish when they want to pick it up. So that changes it from a Texas rig to kind of a Peg Carolina rig very easily. It's kind of stupid simple and that's the name of the game is when we're figuring out these concepts. You want to make it very easy for yourself when you're fishing so you're not cutting and retying if you want to try something different to let you dictate what these fish want. Nice thing about these two is these things just slide off. Nice and easy when you're done, put the weight down, and there you go, you're casting a weightless Texas Rig Kamita once again. So the Texas Rig, how you rig this up, this style, very, very effective, and you can do it with the Carolina Rig the same way how you rig the plastic with that slip sinker on there as well to vary your dip, your distance from the weight to the presentation. So very, very common. I know that was a question asked by a few of you in the past is, you know, show me how to just rig up some of these Kamitas. I know you use them a lot. A lot of times, Matt, people have said that. So this is one of the ways you want to rig that. So taking this exact same hook, since it's still tied in the line, we'll go from Texas rigging that type of presentation to just literally wacky rigging it. 
Many of you heard T-boning, hot dog rigging, wacky rigging, what it might be. Very simple. Kamita's make it easy. You got two rib portions of this body, and then you got a smooth portion on there. All I'm doing is I'm just rigging it right there on that smooth portion, and as you can see, it's got a nice enticing action. Slow fall, skipping around dock, shallow cover. Wacky rigging has become a very common vocabulary of many bass anglers nowadays, whether you're fishing pro tours, whether you're guiding, whether you're fishing for fun. It's very, very effective for several different situations and a lot of different size fish, whether it's a one pound bass or a seven pound bass, uh, they will crush that wacky rig Kamita. Very, very effective op option there without having to retire or do anything different. So moving down the line, we play with this worm hook quite a bit. And again, that's just the tip of the iceberg of what you can do. You can rig a tube on this. You can rig a, a, a regular twister worm. You can rig a creature bait or a craw bait on here, fishing it the exact same way. So very, very effective way to fish is that, uh, that worm hook there. And you'll see as we go throughout the season, I'm fishing that on a pretty regular basis for a variety of different conditions. So moving on, one of the common things I've gotten from many viewers of deck talk shells throughout the last few years is finesse. A lot of guys know I fish Minnetonka on a regular basis, Chisago chain here in the metro area of Minnesota. And a lot of people wonder, okay, these fish have seen so many spinnerbaits and crankbaits and whatever it might be, the norm. We have to go to finesse approaches. And a lot of people that know me know I fish a lot of light wire hit hooks, light jigs, small finesse plastics. This is where I get to show you something new from Mr. Twister this year. They bring back the pocket series. Many of you know how those work. They're baits that have little pockets or depressions or indents inside the side that help emit bubbles on the way down. You can put scents or jellies in them and they hold those a lot longer. I've been using the pocket phenom last season. It just came out. It didn't really hit mainstream. It will hit mainstream this year. It's a small profile finesse, almost ringworm jigworm bait. And I've been using these with a small thin wire finesse head for exceptional action and a lot of great results and success on Lake Minnetonka this year. Fishing bass, all different types of sizes, all different types of cover. Depending on the jig head you're using, it'll dictate how deep it goes and how you fish it. So for me to fish these pocket series baits, what I'm typically doing is I'm taking, again, there's so many different brands of thin wire shaky heads or mushroom jig heads. I use, you know, FinTech, I'll use the mushroom brand, I'll use the Gopher mushroom jig heads, all different types, um, all terrain, mighty jigs. Whole idea is to have something smaller, more lightweight, to get down there and finesse these fish into biting. So all I'm doing with these, the one I happen to have in my hand is just the title shot, shaky head. You can see it's got just a little dangle there that actually holds the plastic onto the hook. So you're using that to thread onto the head of the, or the meaty portion of this pocket series, Mr. Twister plastic. That threads on there. You can see it holds the plastic in place very, very well. Same thing we did with the Texas rig, you figure out where that comes through. Hook is exposed now, and just bury that tip of the hook barely in that plastic. Now you have a very finesse approach to fishing bass in a variety of different situations. So now I can pitch this on light fluorocarbon, light braid, on a spinning setup, whatever it might be. Even in windy conditions, this will cast fairly well. And you can fish it on cover, you can fish it on weed lines, docked, whatever it might be. So when you're running by, Throwing spinner baits, fish aren't taking it. Throwing your Texas rig, typical slug baits, fish aren't taking it. Go to something more finesse approach, and this is one way I rig that. So whether I'm using this particular jig head, whether I'm using a mighty jig, an all-terrain mighty jig, I'll fish it all the exact same way. You can thread it on there so it fishes much like a jig worm. It'll depend on the weed cover. The last one I showed you, the first one, was that title shot or the FinTech shaky head. That's for around more cover where you're worried about snagging up. An exposed hook like with this Mighty Jig from All Terrain, I'll fish weed lines, pockets, whatever it might be. It actually does give you a better hooking percentage of what that hook exposed. It just depends on the cover you're fishing and how much you want to deal with the weeds. So in terms of finesse goes, a lot of light jig heads fishing very lightweight. I just showed you that awesome pocket series Phenom Worm. The nice thing about the new pocket series here from, from Mr. Twister is that they come in three different models. They cover the, the jig worm like I showed you. They got the paddle tail there. It's got a large paddle for a slower fall and you can actually swim this back to the boat. I've cast this in shallow water and slam it, slow rolling it back to the boat and got a lot of fish to bite on it. And then what I'm really excited about as well is the new pocket craw. And this is only a three and a half, four inch roughly version. It's a small, this can be a tipping agent for a jig. You could fish this Texas rig like I just showed you. You could fish this with a weight in the end and punch through milfoil, punch through cabbage or lily pads. 
The claws come attached. As you saw, I just break them apart to get a little more erratic action and a slow fall. Great way to fish shallow cover, deep rocks, whatever it might be, jig trailer. These can be bit in half and fish as trailers if you want a short biting fish. Very, very effective, but that rounds out that new pocket series from Mr. Twister. I'm extremely excited about You will see them at many stores near you. Otherwise, MrTwister.com, you can buy them right there. Like I said, I've been playing with them the last year or so. Very, very excited. They will become a mainstay in my lineup. So you got the Phenom Worm. Everyone knows about the Phenom Worm from Mr. Twister. Now you got it in a pocket series. You got that Paddle Tail that we talked about that's like the Phenom Worm, but slow, more slow fall. And then you got the one I just showed you, the Pocket Craw. And these come in all the popular colors, which I'm excited about. California 420, Watermelon Red Flake, Okaboji Craw, Black Emerald, Black and Blue, Red Bug. All the colors that we look for when we walk into a tackle shop, they have them. Very, very excited about those. And you'll see those in action this season, trust me. So moving forward from that, other ways you want to rig, we want to talk about drop shotting. I have a lot of guys say, Matt, you have a modified drop shot. How do you rig that? Well, I'm going to show you how we rig that right here. It's, it's a simple approach used with a variety of mechanical parts to get a noisy drop shot. Let's take a look at that real quick. Like I said, we're going to show you how to rig this specific drop shot technique. And what we said, we got a few different parts to this equation. You got just a tiny little 16th ounce bullet weight there. This happens to be just an eighth ounce bullet weight. It can be whatever size you want, depending on the weight. But for sake of uh, purposes here, we're going to show you how to rig that. And then we got a little glass red bead. You got yourself a little swivel there. Those are the parts of the equation. Of course, you got your favorite hook tied onto your drop shot. And this happens to be just a standard hook. It's very easy to rig to keep the hook always straight for drop shot applications. You can use a finesse hook, whatever it might be. Go ahead and use your favorite technique. So how we rig this up is you start with your larger of the two and you're going to slide that onto your tag end of your drop shot. So you tie that on first, the length is dictated based on how you want to fish it. So all we're going to do is we're going to just slide that on there first with the bullet going towards the hook. So that's the first piece of your equation. Next you're going to take your glass bead, brass bead, whatever it might be whatever you prefer to use. I prefer glass because glass makes a lot more noise in the water to call fish in. So next you're going to thread on your glass bead and that's going to go down to your top anchoring system there, your heavier bullet weight. Next is going to be your small little sixteenth ounce, whatever size it ends up being. I use the smallest size possible, just as kind of an anchoring system. That's on there next and what you see happens now is that they actually slide into each other and they make a lot of noise and then the whole purpose for this little split ring at the end is all I'm going to do with that split ring is I'm going to tie that on there I'll just do one quick overhand knot for the sake of the video so you can see what I'm talking about and all that does is acts as a stopping mechanism so now you have your glass bead on there your stopping system so when you jig that it actually makes a noise so it actually is kind of a rattle system underneath your drop shot so that's what I'm hitting the bottom with and you can actually fish larger glass beads whatever it might be you can see there and that's a very effective way to drop shot and then the way I just rig my plastic on there again this is an easy way just to rig with whatever hook you might be using a lot of times I'll just nip hook it just enough so it hangs off there and acts as an enticing mechanism for these fish to bite. So there you have it. Very, very easy way to rig a drop shot. Something different out of the ordinary, not just crimping on a weight. You're actually adding noise, vibration, some kind of attraction to get these fish into bite. So if you're fishing lakes like Minnetonka, where you're not just fishing isolated cover or rock pile, whatever it might be, you're actually fishing at distance, casting down weed lines, drawing fish in, fishing around cover. This is a very effective way you can hear that so you can get these fish in to draw in and bite them with the drop shot technique. Now that we showed you that drop shot, that's kind of unique. I kind of happened got that tip from John Nelson. He's a manager of Thorn Brothers there in Blaine, Minnesota. John's an ex-walleye pro, fish at FW Tour, fish the RCL. A lot of the big circuits throughout the years has cashed a lot of checks, and you can bet he can catch a fair amount of bass. So he showed me that trick a few years ago. I've been using it with a lot of success. Give it a shot the next time you're on the water. Other drop shot techniques is just going to be you know, sure set makes a variety of 
weighted drop shots or drop shot weights. You can use just the simple balls. You can use the cylinders. You can use a triangle. You can use just a cheap water drum and crimp on. The unfortunate thing about fishing drop shots is oftentimes when you get snaked up, guess what? You're breaking off. You're not going to be retrieving everything that's down there. So sometimes simple is better. Just quickly crimp one on there, pitch it out there, fish them effectively. A few other weights that I want to talk about. Tungsten's become a norm in many bass angles arsenals. Tungsten is much heavier. It's heavier than lead, so you use a smaller piece of equipment. So what you can do is you can use a small jig head weight, but have the same effect as a larger profile lead jig head or weight. So tungsten is something you want to consider. And I'm using stuff as heavy as one ounce tungsten for punching through milfoil on tonka. I'm using half ounce bullet tungsten weights for punching through shallow lily pads or casting long distances with Carolina rigs. So again, and of course being environmentally friendly, everyone knows some places it's very important, especially in California and states where they require you to use non-lead items. You have an alternative there. Very, very effective. Yes, a little more spendy, but I'll tell you what, sometimes profile is the name of the game. Small but heavy can catch more fish. So we went over a variety of techniques. We just touched the tip of the iceberg. One thing I want to talk about too with that title shot, Mighty Jig. A lot of times what I do, I know these things taste great, bite a piece of that Kamita off, and now what I can do is I can short shank that or short hook that. If these fish are a little more finicky or they're short biting, as you saw, I shortened that Kamita from 5 inches down to 3 inches by just biting the head off. Now I got a smaller profile. And this will catch big fish. It's another way to finesse approach some of these fish on pressured lakes like Minnetonka, Forest Lake, Wherever you might be across the country where you're fishing bodies of water, they get a lot of pressure. Post-front conditions where fish start to turn off and want to hug the bottom and they're not chasing bigger baits, you can fish that smaller profile. So thinking outside the box oftentimes is the name of the game as well, so you're not just fishing the norm. Try something different. Manipulate what you're using. Don't be afraid to think differently when you're on the water next time. So again, we just talked about a few things here. There's so many ways to rig some of these plastics. Those are just my go-to methods. And you'll see this season, we'll get to try some of these and see how they work and how we actually fish them when we get out of the boat. So get out there in Minnesota now. You can go chase bass, have some fun, have, have a good time. Soon it'll be musky season, and then it'll be all horse barred. So thanks for watching. Matt Johnson with Deck Talk. Send me an email with more suggestions. Again, this is all about you guys. Everything you see here are things that I've been asked to present to you guys. Everyone wanted to know how to rig some of these plastics and what I do with specific plastics that I use. You've heard these names throughout the years. Now you saw how I fish them. So get out there, catch some fish, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.